Hello everyone, I'm Mark Schleusener and I work for the USDA's National Agricultural Statistics Service. I'm the Illinois State Statistician. Today I'm going to describe the methods that NAS uses to forecast yields for major crops. There are three basic methods that NAS employs. The first one is to ask farmers for their best estimate of the land they operate, that is the yields for their crops. Another method is we count and measure crops in the field before and also at maturity. And the third method is that we use satellite imagery. So let's dive into each one of these methods. The first one is the survey of farmers, and NAS calls this project the Ag Yield Survey. Here's how it works. We mail surveys in late July to several hundred farmers in Illinois. We ask about their anticipated yields for corn, soybeans, alfalfa hay, and other hay. And also, it's one more chance for us to get information on yields for wheat and oats. NAS will publish results for Illinois and many states on August 12th of this year. This process is then repeated for a September, October, and November crop production reports. A little bit more about the sampling. There's actually two groups of farmers that are sampled for the Ag Yield Survey. There's a small grains group that is surveyed for wheat, oats, and we also do hay stocks. That group is sampled for the May, June, July, and August crop production reports. There's a second group that's for the row crops. They are sampled for corn, soybeans, and also hay. Those farms are contacted for the August, September, October, and November crop production reports. So when it comes to August, we're using one questionnaire with questions for both the small grains crops and the row crops. We mail that questionnaire to both of those groups. The general timing of the crop production reports is as follows. Questionnaires are generally mailed on the 23rd of the month. Phoning will begin shortly after farmers receive their forms in the mail. And reports are published on or near the 12th day of the following month. It's very important for me to note that every report NAS receives is confidential by law and it's also exempt from the Freedom of Information Act. The second method NAS uses is what we call the Objective Yield Survey. It's a set of field counts and measurements that help us to forecast crop yields. This project is much more costly than the mailing and phoning of farmers, but it does provide valuable insight. The process involves field counts and measurements, but also lab data when the crops approach maturity. We will begin in late August for the September crop production report, and in Illinois, we'll be sampling fields for corn and soybeans. For corn, we count stalks and ears, and we measure the length of the ears. We measure the kernel row, not the length of the cob. At the dense stage of the corn crop, we send ears to our lab in St. Louis for moisture content and shelling fraction analysis. The objective yield survey is currently limited to corn, soybeans, and winter wheat. Previously, it has been used for cotton, for rice, for sorghum, and potatoes. And there are also some state-funded projects for citrus and other tree fruits and nuts. The third method that NAS uses is satellite imagery, and all the satellite imagery is linked to data from the Farm Service Agency. That's farmer-reported data that specifies the crop type and location. One thing some people are very interested in is the price reaction to USDA reports. The monthly crop production reports from NAS get a lot of scrutiny from many sources, and some people are particularly interested in how the futures markets react. In most cases, the price reaction is due to the supply and demand report that is released at the same time as the NAS crop production reports. This is known as the World Agricultural Supply and Demand Estimate Report, or WASD, that comes from the World Ag Outlook Board, which is another part of USDA. In any case, there are price reactions to USDA reports. Some are small and some are large. NAS measures the price changes and produces reports with that information. It's important to note that the price reactions are neutral over time. Here's one example for corn futures price reactions from 25 recent USDA reports. There were 13 price increases, nine decreases, and three reports with no change on the day of the report. In the week following the report, there were 13 increases and 12 decreases for corn futures. So let me summarize. NAS uses three primary methods for yield forecasting. One is the Farmer Yield Survey, or Ag Yield Survey. One is the Field Counts and Measurements, or Objective Yield Survey. And the third one is Satellite Images. Also, I'd like you to remember that price reactions to those reports from NAS and other parts of USDA are neutral over time.
Thank you very much for your attention. If you need more information, agricultural statistics for Illinois can be found at www.nas.usda.gov forward slash il.